You can't go back into the past, and you can't skip ahead into the future. The decisions you make right now is what really counts. And let me tell you that if maybe you're going through something difficult in your life, and you think you need to make a decision, God wants to tell you to first give over the problem to Him, and, and He will show you clearly what direction to take. So as we worship right now, just hand over your problems, your, your issues, your your insecurities, your doubts over to Him. Trust Him. And He will He will be magnified in your life. Take a second to talk to each other and say, I'm glad you came tonight. God, we just uh, leave the record on you, Lord. We just ask that you would be worshipped tonight, God. No matter any circumstance, God, you remain the same. We just want to reflect that, Lord. We want to reflect that about you, Lord.
person's right here on earth is complete without the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the whole reason why we were here, why we were created. It's to be with Him, it's to know Him, to worship Him.
this opportunity once again. Can we thank God? Thank you. Thank you for a time of connection with your spirit. Thank you for a time of, of humility, God, and a time of, of us reaching out, God, and you reaching out, Lord, and us connecting. We just thank you for that, God. We ask that you would bless our hearts, God, and fill us with your spirit, Lord. Help us to discover our purposes in you, Lord. We bless everyone who's here, God. We ask for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a You guys, you can uh, take your seats. You can say hi to somebody you haven't said hi to. Like <laughs> Because you, we love you. Because you, we 
revealed yourself. And Lord God, we're just drawing near to you. Father God, we're drawing near to you because we need you so much. Lord, you are the very desperate need of our existence. You are the oxygen that we breathe. You are the source of life. You are the very power. You are. It was, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be breathing. But you decided for me to live. Therefore, Father, let the life count. Let it count before you, Lord God. Not just before this world. Not just before the accepted standards. But in your holy sight, let it count. Because, Father, when the day comes, we want to stand in your presence. And we don't want to be ashamed of that day. We want to look you right in the eyes, Lord God, without looking sideways, Father. Thinking that we've done wrong. Being ashamed, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you that through Christ you allowed for us to stand strong. But help us, Lord God, to follow on the path of righteousness, Father, that you placed us upon. In Jesus' name, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help each one in your presence tonight. Even right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you may touch your people. I pray that you may release your fresh anointing. I pray that your way, your spirit, Lord God, may move in our hearts and create a new thing. A create a new thing, something that we didn't know before. Something that was hidden from us, Lord, from our understanding. Make it plain and simple, Lord, tonight as we humble ourselves right before you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you and we bless one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Father, we lift up Israel once again before you. Lord God, we thank you for the Jewish nation. We thank you for their struggle. We thank you for what they've been through. And they're actually still here, Lord God, to testify that you are faithful, God. That your covenant is forever covenant. That whatever you decree is unbroken. It cannot be overwritten. It cannot be overturned by man. It cannot be overturned by the enemy, the devil. But it shall come to pass. And Lord God, we just lift up. We lift up your firstborn. We lift up Jacob to you. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that you may save your people, that you may renew your people, that the covenant may be renewed, Lord God, in the understanding, Father, in the acknowledgement, the revelation of the new covenant that is in your blood, Lord Jesus. It may come in their lives, it may come and brighten up the hearts, Lord God. Let the understanding be there. Let the understanding come, Father. Let, Lord God, this morning star, this bright and shining morning star, the Messiah, be birth in their hearts in Jesus' name. We lift up, Lord God, the country Israel. We thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you for your plans, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful things that you're doing. And we ask, Lord God, that you may have mercy upon your people, Lord God, and not only upon them, but those that oppress, those that try to claim, not men's, but your territory. So, Father, we release each one, and we ask for your salvation. We ask for your redemption. We ask that your plans may be sustained. They may come to pass, even in our time, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that we may be partakers of what you're doing, that we may be witnesses, Lord God, of what is happening in our day. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we need life in our midst. You are alive. Help us to be alive for you. In Jesus' name, help us to feel you. Help us, Lord God, to yet find another place in our heart and stretch that also, Father, that you may come and dwell. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you for tonight. Let your word speak to our hearts. Let your word transform us. Let your word change us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Okay, uh, just few announcements before we're going to continue with the Word of God. Uh, once again, we welcome everybody. We are here for the first time. We know, brother, raised up the center. We welcome you, bless you, man. You cannot find what you've been looking for all this time. That is real for us. And just uh, hopefully, and I'm sure it will come to a bigger understanding, broader light for you. Uh, and bless you all. Glad to have you here. Excited that you guys are here, that you continue to come, that you continue, that you don't give up, that you persevere. I know sometimes it's hard. I know sometimes issue arise. I know sometimes there's obstacles in our way because nobody's gonna uh, really just allow us to go to God so freely. There's gonna be some kind of resistance. And it's a normal thing. It's a normal thing. Say to your neighbor, resistance is a normal thing. Because if there is action, there is reaction. If we are in the action of God and we are taking steps towards Him. And there is somebody that doesn't like that. Somebody that's trying to stop us. But I'll tell you the good news. In Christ Jesus, we became unstoppable. How do you like that? None can stop us. None can stop us. Unless God says. He's the only one that can stop us. He's the only one. So we are unstoppable. Therefore, I'm glad that you are here. And I'm glad that you have that spirit of overcomer, that you make it here, that you come, that you put things aside, activities aside, and you're here in the house of God. God honors that and He's going to bless you abundantly for that and through that. Amen. 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 Announcements. Uh, the home groups. Again, I know a few people that are here not coming to any groups. Please, if you need any information, come to me, come to Lusha, come to Zhenya and uh, Alex, the drummer, and we'll gladly provide you with information. I know some of you in Bible school, if you're in Bible school and you don't go to home group, that's okay, because you have enough information as, is, as it is. But if you can make, uh, to, make it to, to home group, you're more than welcome to. It's only going to help you. It's only going to encourage you throughout the week. Now, if you're not in Bible school, and this is the only time you come to church, you come to the place like this, I encourage you, strongly recommend for you to be part of the home group. That's the place where you grow. That's the place where Bible comes to light. That's the place where we can actually, not like here, sometimes we interrupt the preaching and it's okay. Sometimes we ask questions, but we cannot allow ourselves to do that to, 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 to you know, only to a certain degree really, not to a far extent. Where in a home group we can have discussion over a cup of tea and so forth. If it's not a home group like my group is in the office, we'll get to the tea part, I guess. We need some tea, right, Cap? We gotta come up with some tea because we don't have we don't have tea. Only once had for years birthday with some tiramisu cake, which was great. Anyway, but I'm just saying that it's not just about tea; it's about you growing in the knowledge of the Word of God because this is what's gonna sustain your life. This is what's gonna keep you. Uh, somebody said it like this: a great uh, evangelist and a pastor, Dwight L. Moody, he said it like this: that either this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. <laughs> nice. Amen. That's the way it is. Either this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. If you haven't touched the book for a while, that's a, a, a warning sign for you. That's a signal. That's probably something, something is keeping you from it. Because I know when we're right with God, we run to the source. We run to that source. Amen. So therefore, I encourage you to run. 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 Put your effort to it. You come here, great. Run even further. Do not limit yourself, because God has... Great plans for you. Home groups and cell groups, very important. Extremely important. Make it there. Um, all right. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving uh, is coming up, I think, not the next, but the Friday, the following, right? The week after the next one. Now, we uh, actually agreed and we announced last Friday also that we're going to be gathering here together. Now, Thursday is officially Thanksgiving Day, right? Yes. So I encourage you to spend it with your families. Yes. Right? Yes. With moms, dads, grandfathers, grandmothers, and so forth. And, uh, you know, have a great time. It's good. I think it's good. It's our input also, because we run around so much. And this is a family holiday for family to reunite, to thank one another, and so forth. Now, if your family is not around, then I, uh, you know, Please, those that do have families, invite one or two brothers or sisters to, you know, share a Thanksgiving meal together with you at your place. How's that sound? I think that sounds Christian, right? <laughs> I think it's good. 
we're ready. We're ready. Me and my wife already have few people in mind. So I encourage you to do that. So that's Thursday. Thursday we're not going to have meeting uh, at gathering at Bash Shalom. It's canceled, as you heard last Saturday before last. It was announced. Now, Friday, we're coming here for you, but we're not going to have our regular service. We're going to have a Thanksgiving celebration. Well, we're going to have some tables here. We're going to have maybe a little bit of uh, talent participation and uh, food and fellowship and just a brief word and just maybe a song that's about, you know, to, to worship, to kind of enter and so forth into the presence of God. Now, this is what we're going to discuss. I encourage you to stay until the end so we can, once the camera is going to... Shut down. Shut down, we can discuss all the technic technicalities about how we're going to do this. Because we need everybody's participation. Amen? Amen. And I think there's something... Yeah, it's rain. It's a back track background rain. It's a rain? It's rain. It's I'm joking, guys. <laughs> 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 okay. It's stopped. Alright. So, uh, we need everybody's participation. So please... Stay until the end, and then you can raise your hand, and you know maybe we we'll make a quick list. Who's responsible for what? How's that sound? Because I, I think it's good not to leave it kind of abstract. Yeah, we can. We have it a celebration. I'm not gonna bring anything because I know my sister's gonna take care of it. My brother. Next thing you know, we're just gonna come here, put the ch chairs, and it's gonna be the same service. No turkey, nothing. Imagine that. Ay ay ay. Well, we'll do even that, but let's participate. Okay. Uh, while the, 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 the service continues, please think on a song that you would like to sing, maybe a testimony, a brief testimony that you want to share about your, how grateful you are to God. Maybe a little poem, you know, maybe a, a skit that you want to take a person or two or three and just have a little skit. How about that? Good? I think it sounds good. No. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Who's, who ever participated in school activities? Oh. Guys. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> okay, so let's just... Attention doesn't count. You know? Yeah, I love food, okay? Let's come back to that. You know, let's come back. This is, you know, this is you, this is our place, and, you know, there's no mean principle here. But, uh, just, uh, you know, voluntarily. God knows when we do things voluntarily, ask for Him. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll actually uh, figure out the time once we have a little discussion 10 to 10 minutes after the service. Thank you. Okay, with that I think uh, all the announcements... Uh, uh, yeah, one more announcement. We need the person, uh, also a volunteer, uh, to serve behind that camera, you see, right there. A camera that's actually... <laughs> we got one. We need... Jane. Yeah, yeah. Please connect, <laughs> exchange the information, and uh, are, are you alright with the uh, cameras and, oh, yeah? That's it. <laughs> you can do it. Okay, so Jenny, raise your hand. That's Jenny, please come to him, and uh, I will let him know yeah. who you are, and if you'd like to serve we need a person right now. Is going to be responsible for that. A few things come with it, he'll explain. One is you need to be a little bit earlier to set it up and so forth. So, you know, that's part part, part of the deal. And, uh, okay. Listen, it's good to serve God, right? Anything, any, you know, little thing that I can bring to the table is good. Any little tiny thing is good. It's rewarded. You know where reward comes? Right here. In my heart, in my life, it's so fulfilling. Jesus himself said it like this. It is better to give than to receive. It is better to give than to receive. Don't you feel good when you're able to give? Then give. Give. Give unto the Lord and it shall be given to you. Good man. So, uh, we're going to continue uh, our topic just kind of go on with what we talked about for the past couple of weeks. We talked about breaking of stereotypes, remember? Who remembers? Because I know less than this, not many. Well, a little bit, <laughs> not my leader, not. It's, it's a little bit more right now, but uh, I'm just going to refresh. We talked about breaking the stereotypes. Remember, we talked about Peter and Cornelius. We talked about Saul that became Apostle Paul and 
Ananias, the disciple of Jesus Christ, how God used those naturally unfitting people to kind of join them together and, and do a great thing in their midst and through their midst. Okay, so we also talked about how Jesus is the living stone, so we are the living stones. You remember, right? Also, like Jesus Christ, we are the living stones and we're being built into the temple of God. We also discussed the fact that the reason God does it is because the reason He's working with us and the reason that He's putting people in our lives that are pretty much unnecessary for us to be there, whether they're good people or bad people. And the reason for it is that He wants to change us. He wants to not only change us and make us into somebody, God knows what, but into His image. That's God's original design. He made the first man, Adam, and Eve, the first people He made in His image and in His likeness. And that image through sin has been shattered. Jesus Christ came so we can be restored to the image of God. So once we come to salvation, once we come to Jesus Christ, we, be, we begin the restoration process. We are not there yet. Can you say amen? Anybody there yet? We still restore it, right? Now, so we continue, we continue to grow, we continue to change, we continue to learn until we are back at that original intent. We are back like Him. Like it. Jesus says, let's make them people in our likeness. Like Him. So that's the whole purpose of salvation is for us, not only to be with Him, but to be like Him. Amen? The purpose of salvation, not just to be with Him, but to be like Him. Where your spirit, body, and soul is totally redeemed, and you are like Him. The Bible says that we shall see Him as He is. We shall be like Him. Isn't that amazing? So we have something to look forward to, and the change begins, not when I die, but right now as I live. That's when I'm facing a choice. Do I want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, or do I want to do my own thing? And yet have some form of misunderstanding about God altogether. You see, He loves us. And you know what? It's a great and it's an awesome thing. But that's not all. He wants for us to be like Him. He wants to also change us. I said it once, I said it many times and I'll repeat it again. God so loves you that He'll accept you the way you are. The way you are. But He so loves you that He'll never allow for you to stay the way you are. He's going to continue to work with you. He's going to continue to change you. So that's what we talked about, the smooth stones. That naturally stones, they have different shapes. and They're spiky. But God wants to use smooth stones. People that are humble. People that have peace chopped up from here and attitude chopped up from here. They don't bring to God and to people around their agendas, but they are willing to listen and be obedient to what the Lord desires and requires for them. So like that, we become smooth. Amen? Okay, so we talked about that. And the reason is, again, God never asks us to do something that He doesn't do Himself. That's fair, right? It wouldn't be fair if He would ask us something that He's not doing Himself. That would be unfair. That's like, God, why are you trying to set me up? But He does it Himself. He, Jesus, came to this world to show us an example. He lowered himself. He became humble. He said, Father, if these are the people, not only friends, not only those that followed him, but even the enemies, they were there for a specific purpose. And God allowed for them to be there. So he said, Father, if that's your will, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's in a natural, doesn't make sense. But I am willing. I am submitting. I am humbling myself. I'm becoming smooth. I'm humbling myself, Lord. Let your will be done. That living stone, Jesus Christ. So he showed us an example. He lowered himself. He was holy. He dwelt among unholy people. He was righteous. He was around unrighteous people. He was perfect around n not perfect people. You see? And he was with them. And he was teaching them some, something. And willing to endure. Understanding that God has a plan. And has a purpose. As a matter of fact, this particular teaching, the last sermon that I preached this week, we said amen last Friday, and we sealed it with prayer. And you know what? The Word of God has this ability, not only ability, but it has this uh, kind of tendency to check you right after you speak it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so me, I was speaking, I was sharing, and it's something that, you know, God's been dealing with me and revealing to me personally, and I'm sharing that with, with you guys. But, as soon as Monday started, things just started coming. You know, in this particular issue, where, you know, people kind of appeared, I mean, they were there, but people appeared around me with such an attitude, and boy, was I tempted. I was severely tempted. I mean severely tempted, not, you know, to, to just tell them like it is, to just set the record straight, set things all right, let them know what's up. <laughs> but I had to hold my peace, I had to humble myself, and thank God, not by my might or not by my ability, but only by the grace of God, through my wife, through the teachings, through the scriptures that I read, through prayer, I was able to hold my peace. And this wave sort of kind of, you know, come down right now. It's not as strong anymore. That temptation is not as strong. You see what I mean? So it, it really checked. It really checked. And now I'm not, I'm not sure what's going to happen after this service. God, please have mercy. Because it's serious, see, you see. The Word of God is serious. You see, every one of us here that gets to hear what I'm saying automatically becomes responsible. Amen. We become responsible because we already cannot say I didn't know or I didn't hear. So welcome to the club, guys. The reason I'm sharing with you because I love you, but also one of the reasons is that I don't want to be alone in all this. <laughs> you know how you commit a crime? You want a crime partner? So he, yeah, partner in crime. So 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 here's the, is the same thing. Amen. He shows an example for us. The reason for it, because God has something in mind, God has something in store, He's up to something when He's dealing with us. He puts people, right people, wrong people, in our lives to make us like Him. You see, the key ingredients in our relationship with God is this, is our trust and our obedience. Can you say trust and obedience? Trust and obedience, trust and obedience are the key ingredients to walk with God. You see, we are called to obey. One of the callings, it's not again just to get to heaven, but to obey God. Do you think that God has a plan for your life? Yes. Who thinks that? Who wants to fulfill that plan? Do you know that we need to humble ourselves for that? Do you know that we need grace for that? I'll tell you what's grace. Among many definitions, this is what grace means. It means ability to overcome. Grace is God's given supernatural ability to overcome any situation, any circumstance, and any feeling that I may experience. Grace is God's ability to, ability to overcome. But you know how grace is supplied into our lives? It's not a given thing. It's not a given thing just to anybody. No, no, God is very careful to whom He gives His grace. The Bible says, humble, you see God gives grace to the humble. Amen? Amen? There's only one way to receive grace, and that's to humble myself before God. That's the only door to receive the grace of God. To humble myself. So now, I need a lot of grace. At work, I need grace. On my, in my school, I need grace. In, in Bible college, I need grace. With my family, I need grace. With my friends, I need grace. With believers and non-believers, I need grace. And notice, anywhere where, the, where people are present, I need a lot of grace. Amen. Amen. And probably people that's, that, that, that I'm next to say the same thing. With him, I need a lot of grace. <laughs> a lot of grace. Now, if we need a lot of grace, there's only one way to get that. Ability, supernatural ability to overcome. Grace is supernatural, God-given ability to overcome. Where I could not overcome in the natural, God's grace came and made me able to overcome. Obstacle, addiction, and so forth and so on. Do you understand? So that grace, that ability, is given through humility or to the humble people. When we humble ourselves before God. When we humble ourselves before God. I don't mean a certain posture in which we worship. I don't mean a certain, you know, that it has to be just on our knees. Or it has to be with a, you know, I never smile. I'm humbling myself. 
you know, don't, don't touch me, I don't, don't come near me because I don't brush my teeth because I'm humble in myself. <laughs> and people have all sorts of uh, wrong interpretations of humility. Not humiliation, but humility means to humble, right? That's not what it means. It's much deeper, it's much more than that. But that's the only, when I humble myself, that's the only way I can get the grace of God in my life, that ability to overcome. Look what the word says. It's, I, I love it. I love it. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Let's just go to, through some word a little bit. By the way, uh, Isaiah 66. <laughs> Okay, look what it says. God says it like this, heaven is my throne, thus says the Lord. Oh, we got King James. All right. <laughs> Let's try NIV because I think it's going to be, uh, even though King James is a great, great translation, but it's kind of a little bit outdated, it's Shakespearean language. Thou art, and so forth. Okay, so this is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? And then further, has not my hand made all these things and so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Amen? So really, us being on earth, the Bible says that this earth, you know what it is? It's a mat for God's feet to rest upon. He says, earth is my footstool. That's where I lay my feet. Take the slippers and lay my feet on this earth. But the heaven is my throne. That's where I reside. But the feet, you see, are upon the earth. So really, we as people, what we have... As far as access in God, is access to His holy feet. Because we are where? On earth, right? Where we are? On earth. So, Bible says that His feet are placed upon this earth. So we have access to His holy feet. But this is what He says, there is a way to get higher than that. There is a way to be elevated to the level of my face, where we could talk Face to face. The Bible says that Moses was meek and humble man. And God spoke to him face to face. The Bible constantly teaches us and exhorts us to seek the face of God. You see? So when we humble ourselves. He says, to the humble and the contrite broken. The one that considers himself, not the one that has low self-esteem. But the one that considers himself lowly before holy God understands that He is majestic as we sing. He is wonderful. He is holy God, holy majesty, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, everywhere-present being that no mind can fathom and contain. We humble ourselves before Him. We get to be elevated, not just to see His feet, but actually talk to Him face to face. But the ticket to His face, it's a long, long journey from earth to heaven. You see, here are the feet, but the face is up there. His throne is in heaven and He sits upon it. The way to get there, the ticket to see His face, to be in His presence, into is to humble us. And tremble at His word. Regard, highly regard what the word of God says. Amen? You know, I've, uh, this week I've discovered yet another interesting fact about the word of God. It's amazing that you can never stop talking about the Word of God. You know that the Word of God itself, the Bible, talks about the Bible or the fact that God spoke this Bible into existence more than 3,000 times. More than 3,000 times the Bible speaks of itself that God is the one who spoke it. More than 3,000 times. Can you imagine? And the Bible is a light. It says that it's a light. It's like a light, that, that light or a flashlight that you have in your hand. You see what I mean? And the place where we live is darkness. It's very dark. It's pitch black. It's all lies in evil. Jesus said that the whole world lies in evil. Can you agree with me? 
The whole world lies in evil. It's just saturated. It's soaked in the presence of evil. It's swallowed up by evil. Evil intents. Evil motives. Evil activities. Evil behavior. Evil. Where you look, it's evil. And if you don't believe me, take a look at not the latest news and you agree with me. Because you're not going to find much... You know, uh, much great, much, much, much things that are good happening around us in this world. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, being in this dark and evil place, God says, listen, I don't want you to walk around and stumble and hurt yourself. Here's a flashlight. Here's the brand new batteries, fully charged. This is what you do. You're in the dark place, just go, Bleh! And it's going to illumine the whole area. So you can see where you're walking. So the objects that are around you, you're not going to hit. Does it make sense? Yes. You're not going to hit. So basically, one of the reasons we have the Word of God, it's like a light that illumines the atmosphere, the place where, where I am in my life. So it prevents me from hurting myself. And from getting bruised over and over. Have you tried to walk in the dark in a place where there's a lot of objects? <laughs> Every time it happens. Boom. Ah, oh. Next thing you know, it's black and blue. It's pain, you see? And I'll tell you, the, uh, the quality of the bruise, it depends how fast you're walking and how hard the object is that you're hitting. Oh, yeah, man. Amen? See, you can hit your toe, but you can hit your head. You can just have a little pain, pinch in your toe, but you can actually have a deep scar, a deep wound in your head. Do you understand? You cannot, we cannot walk in and live in darkness without getting hurt. We automatically will get hurt. It's only a matter of time. So God says, listen, yes, it is the fact. It is actually 100% like that, that you are in a dark place. This is a dark place. You're here temporarily, but I love you, son. I love you, my dear daughter. Here's a flashlight for your earthly journey. Use it anytime you need to. Turn it on. Look what's happening. Keep on walking. Keep on walking, making your way. Go around objects that are, you know, might stumble you, hurt you, make you fall, and maybe even kill you <coughs> if they're sharp enough. You see, so the Word of God, it's not just gives us direction, it also keeps us safe and secure. You see, every, every advice that is given here, advice given by our Heavenly Father that loves us, that wants nothing but good for us, and it's for us so we can have a normal, peaceful, productive, good life. Isn't that amazing? It's that simple. Just so we can avoid traps. So we can avoid pain. So we can avoid hurt. That's not what we were created for. We were created to enjoy this life. To love one another. To give to one another. To bless one another. To shine for one another. Amen? This word will help us. So it's a fascinating thought. And every time we approach the Word of God, if we tremble before it, what does it mean to tremble before the Word of God? It means to humble myself. When I tremble, it means that I take things seriously. It's not a joke to me. I'm not in a joking mode. I'm not in the mode to play around. I want to get and partake from my God. Right now, God is speaking to me. And I want to just focus all of my attention to receive what He has to say. Because it's a life supply for me. I need that. I'm absolutely in desperate need for that. Amen? Yeah. So with that, you know, one more thought about this. Uh, we like to listen to advices, right? And before in the past, we went, you know, for the advice to God knows who. I mean, really, bad sources, right? Very bad sources. Some advices that we took as genuine, they actually almost destroyed us. So, the thought is that if we're going to take any advice, why not to take the advice that God has? I mean, really. Why not? Isaiah said it like this in another place in chapter 
8 verse 20, it says like this. He rebukes the people of God. He says, why are you going to spiritists and mediums to occult people, to inquire of psychics? Why do you go there? He says, that's evil. And I'm going to deal with you for it. God speaks to his people. And then he says it like this. To the testimony and to the law. Go to them. Go to the word of God. And if the, they don't, you know, and if those psychics and any source that you acquire for the advice do not align with this word, there is no light in them. You see, it may be a nice flashlight, latest edition, with a nice glow, the great thing, but you know what? You are in a dark place and you're like, yeah, baby, I'm about to press on. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I can't believe that lady fooled me. <laughs> and it doesn't work. What's going to happen? It's going to set you up. Because there is no light in there. It may look nice. It may say, the best flashlight in the world. Made it to Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> It's like, you know, there was a holiday. <laughs> That's all right. I thought I'm already bleeding or something. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> a lot of flashlight. <laughs> okay, so, you see what I'm saying? So now, it may have all of the those commercials and nice advertisement about it. But you know what? There's no light in that. But the light is in the Word of God. Say amen if you understand. Amen. 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 Please read your Bibles. Who has a Bible with them today? I'm just curious. Thank God for all of you. Like 40% of you have a Bible. Good. God bless. So listen, if you need a Bible, please let's let's work together. In uh, get, get in one and find in one for you. It's important. Because if you don't have a Bible, I'm very concerned. I'm, uh, you know, I might uh, give a nice sermon. It would, it could be full of meaning and insight, but I highly doubt it's gonna, gonna be enough to sustain you until next Friday. You would need to read your Bible on your own. You would need to feed on the Word of God. Let's go to it, Matthew chapter eleven. Chapter 11, book of Matthew, starting verse 28. Again, the word of God is written as a caution for us. And is given to us as a light to help us to walk in darkness. Can you treat it as such? So whatever we read, whatever it says, if we apply it in our lives, it's like we turn on that light, so now we see where we're going, and we're going to avoid pits and falls. We're going to avoid mean and hidden, sharp, unnecessary objects. Thus, we're going to avoid pain, and we're going to avoid suffering. We don't need that. Amen. So now, 1128, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is a famous scripture. Jesus, he announces and he sends an invitation to every human being. Because technically without God, every human being is heavy burden. Every human being is, without God, is tired, is weary. There are problems that piled up upon each life. Whether the life shines like a superstar from the magazine, whether it's Jennifer Lopez or Kanye West, I guarantee you there are more problems probably than you and I both together have. They exist, more problems than us probably corporately. You see, every human being without God is burdened and weary and exhausted. 
Because sin, what it does, it exhausts people. It drains life out of people. And Jesus, being a good shepherd, being a redeemer, and a wonderful savior, he extends an invitation. And he says, all of you, all of you, come to me. If there is heaviness in your life, if there is heaviness in your heart, if there are heavy circumstances and issues that are hard pressing you, come to me. And I'm going to free you and I'm going to give you rest. I think it's a wonderful invitation coming from the kind and great Heavenly Father. From the kind and great Savior that He sent to us. Amen. Think about it. What an invitation given to all mankind. And we happen to hear it. We happen to actually say, what? Really? There was a time when I said, really? Me? You mean me with, with that problem? You're calling me right now? You mean I can also be in that, amongst that, those, among that, those numbers, right right with you? You mean me, the unworthy one? You mean me that nobody wants to have nothing to do with? She says, come all, all of you, come to me, and you will find rest. So I just want to also point our attention that, you know, as we come to him, there are burdens that we carry. You know, through a long journey. Some of us walk to Jesus 20 years. Some walk to Jesus 27 years. Some walk to Jesus 15 years. And you know, it's a, a very piled load. It's, it's a very heavy load and a burden that I carry. And I'm coming to Jesus in this condition. It's been hard. It's been heavy. It's been depressing. It's been life didn't make no sense. It's been meaningless so far. And here I am making my way to Him. So as I'm coming to Him, I'm laying my burdens down. And for the first time in my life, I truly feel that I'm loved. I truly feel that I accepted. That I'm accepted. I'm true. I truly feel light. And I truly feel and taste freedom. What it's like to be like myself again. My shoulders, are, they feel light. That just that pile's been thrown off. It's been cast down. And then she said it like this. Because many people make a mistake here. They think that the reason for Jesus calling them is so they can get freed and light and period. But he doesn't stop there. And many people quote this particular scripture and they say, Jesus said, come to me. Lay your burdens. Come to me all. You have a laden. Come to me and I will give you rest. Period. But look what he goes on to say. Let's read carefully. Come to me so we come. All who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. But he doesn't stop there. He continues his thought. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle or the other translation says I am meek I am meek and I am humble in heart inside and you will find rest for your souls it is only then that we will find rest for our souls if we are going to learn from Jesus Amen you see because Jesus knows us very well he knows the way our substance what we made of you see, people like us, everybody, not just like us, but any person, if we come to God and we just lay our burdens down and yet we walk from God light and we're feeling all good, it's only a matter of very short time that I'm going to be back where I was with even greater burdens upon my shoulders. Amen? Amen. And God, Jesus Christ, tries to avoid that in my life. He wants to teach me how to live and stay free. Burden free. And the way to do that, that he says right here, you got to take up my yoke. Take up my yoke. Do we have a yoke? Let's show them the yoke. <laughs> this is a yoke. Wow. Yoke is simply an instrument. Yoke is simply an instrument that... <laughs> Connects two animals together. So you see the oxen, they're plowing. You see what I'm saying? They have this yoke. One yoke, but two animals yoked together. And Jesus simply says, as a servant of God, right there. 
As a servant of God, Jesus says, look, I am here. I came to do the will of the Father. I am here not because I came here on my own. I'm not a person that appointed myself. I'm not self-appointed Messiah. My Father from heaven, He sent me to this earth. And I'm here as a servant. But not only am I here to, as a servant to serve you, but I'm here to allow you to stand right next to me and serve side by side with me so you can learn what it is, really, what's the point of your existence here. Amen? Amen. He says, take my yoke upon you. Yoke yourself right next to me. That's what, exactly what he says. So you come to God, you lay your burdens down. He says, whoa, 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 don't leave yet. Let me tell you. Now, you got to take up my yoke. Lock yourself right next to me, and let's go for more productive service and a labor in the kingdom of God. That's the reason why Jesus came. He says, lock yourself in this yoke with me, and let's go together. Do the will of the Father. And when you're going to do that, watch me closely the way I talk. Watch me closely the way I behave. Watch me closely how I react to things. Be my disciple. As you're right there under that yoke together with me, let me teach you. Why? Because I am humble in heart. I'm not going to lead you in the wrong direction. I'm not going to lead you somewhere where it's dark. I'm going to keep you in the right path. I want you to come with me. And we're going to do this thing together. Take my yoke upon yourself. Isn't it interesting? And as we go together, watch closely what I'm about. Because look what he says. Take my yoke. First you come. Then you take yoke. And then you begin to learn. He says, and learn from me. That's actually a definition of disciple. You see, Jesus didn't come to make believers. Don't you understand? Because but to believe in God, guys, this might shock you, but I gotta say this to you because the Bible speaks it. To believe in God, it's not enough to be with God. The Bible says that demons also believe and they tremble. They believe in God. You cannot disbelieve. Devil, you cannot tell to devil that God is not there because he knows very well that he is there. He used to serve side by side with him before he was thrown from heaven as a fallen angel. You see, so demons and devil believe in God more than people do. But this type of belief cannot save them. It's of no use. You see what I mean? It's not enough just to believe in the fact that God is and believe in him. We have to be with him and we have to learn from Him. Amen? You see what's happening? We are learning from Him. If I don't learn from Him, what am I doing with Him? Jesus didn't come to make Himself popular because He was lacking attention. So the more people clap when the name of Jesus is mentioned, the better He feels about Himself. That's not God. He said, I am humble. I don't need all that. I am here to do what I got to do. And that's it. And I'm welcoming you. I'm saying, come, leave your burden. Leave your understanding. Come to me. Leave all that that dragged your mind, you through the life. And come to me, but you got to yoke yourself. You see, that's where many face difficulty. They say, I come. I come very near to the point where I go, yes, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. You're good. I adore you. But as soon as I see the sh shadow and the shade of that yoke, Come into my neck. I'm like, uh, 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 not yet. No, 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 not yet. I'm not, I'm not quite ready. Not quite ready yet. My life, my life is what counts. I gotta still do this and this and this, and I'm not ready to give this and this and this, and I gotta still do this and this and this. What's happening at that particular moment? Again, I'm saying. Well, while I'm saying all this stuff, I'm actually. This is a translation. In realistically, I still gotta pile of burdens back in my life, I still got to be oppressed. It wasn't enough yet. Thank you for freeing me, but I'm going to go back to the same thing and have it even worse than I did before. And tell me. Does it make sense, guys? Yes. To me, it doesn't. 
No, meaning what I'm saying makes sense. But I'm saying it doesn't make sense. What's the point of coming to Jesus Christ with that type of attitude? What's the point? There is no point. You see, this is what God wants. Right here. Two together under one yoke. So you gotta take it upon you. You gotta stand right next to me, side by side, and let's go together and labor. And as we do that, wash me closely. Read my word. Look what I've done. Because I want you to do the same thing. Jesus said, things that I do, you're gonna do greater things. But you gotta know how to approach it, how to go about it. You gotta know what I'm about. You gotta spend time in my presence. You gotta consult me. And I'm gonna teach you, teach you, teach you, learn from me. But first and foremost, what I need to be like him and be his follower is this. Gentle or meek. You know what's meekness simply? This is what the definition of meekness. Strong but gentle. Like Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. <laughs> strong but gentle. I mean, you really have a strength to say, whoa, and you fly. <laughs> but yet, there is this gentle approach. Bless you. That's meekness, you see? Because Jesus was meek. Tell me, did he have power to go with this? And all the enemy, they just dropped. He had that power. When he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jewish or Pharisee soldiers came to arrest him. There was many of them. And Peter, he took a sword. And, and he actually cut one, one ear of the you know, Pharisee soldier. And Jesus took that ear, placed it right back and said, Peter, put your sword back where you, where, you, where, you, where you got it from. Because he who takes the sword or you know, lives by the sword shall die by the sword. And then he said, he asked this question, don't you know, Peter, that I can right now go to my father in heaven, he's going to supply 12 legions of angels, each legion is 6,000. Wow. That's 72,000 right there. In the Bible we read in the uh, second Kings that one angel was so strong that he was able to destroy 185,000 of the Syrian army, one angel. Yeah. He said, I can call right now, I can call right now 72,000. What do you think is going to happen to all these people? But he said, I am meek. I'm not here to do that, to start a riot. I'm here to do Father's will. I'm not here to prove my right. I'm here to do the Father's will. To labor as that ox under that yoke. And he said, I want you to learn from me. That's where the, the true source of happiness and understanding to life. He says, I am humble in heart. Not outwardly humble. I met some people. You look at them, saints. You can just look at them, you know, you look at them worship. And you can call up <coughs> one of the artists and like, <coughs> look at them. And I'm like, wow. Let me get my stuff. <laughs> you know what that artist takes this to the local shop he frames it next thing you know it could be an icon I mean you just add a little halo to it and this is the epitome a personification of humility <laughs> and yet we come, and then we come outside from the service <laughs> what just happened? Without even realizing. You see, the problem here? Humble, yes, but not in heart, on the outside. Only for a certain moment. As, uh, you know, as humility is needed, as the atmosphere requires. On demand, I like it. Humble on demand, I love it. <coughs> Humble on demand, perfect. Jesus says, I am humble in heart. You see, it's an issue of my heart. It's an inside thing. Nobody can take it away from me because it's a part of me, it's who I am. He says, I want you to learn from me as we walk and labor together. And then he says, and then, it is then that you will find rest for your soul. That's where the true rest 
is. That's the source of rest. When I humble myself before God. When I don't fight my battles, but I allow Him to fight for me. Because it's a sure victory. But it's very hard, technically, to switch as a situation there. Naturally, we want to fix it. Naturally, we want to just... Uh, we want justice to be done. And that's partially okay. But we need to learn how to humble ourselves. Amen? Jesus came as a lamb. Why? To show us an example. He didn't come as a lion yet, and I'll tell you partially why. Because if he would come as a lion, and we would be still here believing in him, this is the way we would behave. Ah! Why? Because I'm representing my God. <laughs> he said to be like him, so here I am. <laughs> he said, not here, unsanctified people. For now, this is the only example I leave you. A lamb, a humble animal, submissive animal. And I want you to learn from me. Then you're going to find rest for your souls. Do you understand? There's a power in that. So now, according to the scripture, who wants to be at peace, honestly? Like, really at peace. But like remember the more yeah, right here too, with both, you know, legs and hands. I want to be at peace. Sometimes there are moments that you would give anything, all that you possess, so you just can have peace. Tough moments. You just, I just want peace. That's all I want. None of the stuff does it for me. None of the stuff cuts it for me. I just want to be at peace. So based on what Jesus is talking about here, He says the source of peace is humility, is to humble yourself before Almighty God. Next time you really want peace, I suggest to you, this is what you do. Close yourself in a room and start seeking God in prayer. You know what you do? You humble in yourself. You put in your will aside and you say, Jesus, I'm putting your yoke right around my neck. I'm yours. You see, that's exactly what Jesus did. He teaches us to do that. When he was accused, the Bible says, he opened his mouth not, but he delivered all the judgment to him who judges rightly, to God. Next time there was a situation. You see, he gives us all sorts of things for all situations we may face so we can become victorious. Come out with dignity out of the situation and become like him through that situation. You see, we can treat it as a problem, we can treat it as an opportunity. Amen? Situations and problems in our lives, we can treat it as a problem, we can treat it as an opportunity. Uh-uh, let me see. I think God is trying to tell me something. I think He wants to teach me. I think this is my opportunity to yet be even closer to Him and become like Him. Let's open up. Learn from me, I am humble in heart. Philippians chapter 2. Okay, start in verse 3. This is already a practical uh, admonition to us believers, to the people in church. You see, because God doesn't change. The same God that spoke in Christ, the same God speaks through the apostles and through the whole Bible. You know, it's just that each writer breaks it down from a, maybe a, a from, from his own perspective, but it's all one revelation, it's all one understanding coming from the same source. And look what Apostle Paul writes here. Actually, he's writing from prison. A person that has every human right being accused for something that pretty much for spreading the good news, for trying to do good to people and be good by people, he gets like a two to three year term in prison. How do you like that? In a severe prison with a severe circumstances. And out of that prison he writes, 
Hallelujah, my dear brothers. Let me tell you. Yeah, oh man, I'm telling you. What a spirit. What a spirit. What a, you know, they say like, in Russian, человек дух, да? Как это сказать? На английском, вот, духовой человек такой, сильный. Not spiritual. Whatever, you got it. The man. That's what I'm trying to say. Who was the man? And look what it says. Verse, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility. You see again? In humility. In humility. Word to be humble. In humility. That's like Christ. Consider others better than yourselves. Ooh, don't take me there. But that's what it says. None of us like to hear that. I gotta agree. I don't like to hear that. What you mean consider others better than myself? I mean, who's better? Is there anybody on this planet? I mean, really. You see what I'm saying? And, and it, naturally, that's the attitude. But God is here to what? Change us. Make us like Jesus. He says, learn from me. Learn from me. Be like me. You already been like yourself. Yourself. That got you nowhere. You're full with burdens. That that's the outcome of your selfish ambitions. And you came to me and you laid them down. From this point on, learn from me. He says, be humble. Be humble. Treat others highly as yourself. Think that they're better than you. Then each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Amen? Not only to my own interests, but to the interests of others. This is the whole subject in itself, and we're going to continue to talk about it later, you know, down the line. But really, this is humongous here for us Christians. It means that the whole attitude of our life should change, and the way we treat people around us. It, it means that my way doesn't work anymore. I have to put it aside. I'm yoked with Christ. Not your own interest. Yeah, but I want to do this. Okay? But it's not a sin. Okay? It might not be a sin. But when you're doing that, are you considering the way your brother or sister may feel? Or are you trying to hinder their work with God just because you want to be free? You see? Jesus did not demonstrate all that he could have demonstrated. Like I said before, he was God in the flesh. Yet he humbled himself. Because there was a reason. Because other people needed to be saved to God. If he would seek his own interests, where would we be today? But he came for you and I. He showed an example. How to put life down so others can benefit and profit from it. And I'll tell you, us, we can chill and it's okay to spend time together. But there are people that need to hear the word of God. There are people who are waiting for your testimony. Mine is not going to touch them, but your testimony will touch them. If I'm going to come to the kid in the school that I cannot identify with, he's going to say, Thank you, Jaja. <laughs> That's a touching story, but I cannot identify. But if you're going to come to the same kid, you know what's going to happen? He's going to say, Wow, you know what? And you're going to see tears start rolling. I really feel that, man. Tell me what's up. Tell me more about that. But you see, if I live only to my own interests, only if I'm concerned about my reputation, what's going to happen? None get to hear. None get to experience. It stops with me. That's the difference between all other seas and rivers and so forth and a dead sea. Because all the waters that enter into it, nothing comes from it. It simply dies. It says, all interests, we have to put them aside and look, live for others. Also consider the interests of others. God does not deny us fun, relaxa you know, relaxation, enjoyment of life. He says, but also remember there are others. And then he says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Same thought. He says, come and learn from me. How our attitude should be? The same like Jesus Christ. Let's say, the same as of Jesus Christ, as that of Jesus Christ. Let's read it. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, 
My attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Another translation says that you have you gotta have the same mind as Jesus Christ. Another translation says you gotta have the same feelings like Jesus Christ. You see what we're called into as people of God? To resemble Him, to learn from Him. How much each of us adores Him besides the fact that He saved me to go to heaven? How many are willing to learn from Him? How many are willing to pick up the yoke or just lay down the burdens? But one will not work without the other. I can never be free unless I am totally surrendered to Him. Because He is the source of freedom. He is the freedom Himself. I'm not only going to deceive myself. I can never abuse God and use God. Never. He knows everything. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever man will sow, he shall reap. You can never mock God. Nothing can move him or shake him. He is most powerful. Mm -hmm. It says, who being in the very nature God, talking about Jesus, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. You see? He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And that at that name, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, he humbled. What did God do? God exalted. And that's the process. If I want to exalt my own self in my own life, you know what's going to happen? God is going to lower it. If I want to exalt, my, exalt myself in my life, God will lower it. But if I'm going to humble myself to the standards of God, to the Holy Word of God, He's going to, the Bible says, humble yourself before God and He will lift you in due time. It's going to be Him. And once God lifts in somebody, nobody's going to bring that person down any longer. Amen. Nobody can ever do that. You see? And what I want to underline, and we finish it very soon, is this. He humbled himself. Just leave that thought with me. Because you see, there's different ways to get humbled. Sometimes God can humble you. Like in the story of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who was the king of the greatest empire of his time. It's an interesting story. He built great empire. None could mess with it. <clears throat> Nobody could come even closer to it. When burned the temple in Jerusalem, got all the articles, valued articles, made of gold and silver, took many nations captive, brought them to his empire, they all worked for him. Even the Jews, they worked there. Why? You know, in a, like in banking and so forth, accounting. So, you know, to progress this great empire. He wouldn't let people go. He would collect them all around him so the empire would be advanced. Nobody could mess with that person and his power. And yet, the Bible says that one day he was on his balcony of the palace and he was overlooking this great, magnificent structures in an ancient Babylon. And he sees, wow. And he begins to speak to himself. This is wonderful. My hands have built this wall. I am such a smart man. Nobody can mess with me. I am the greatest indeed. And it is proven. History speaks on my behalf. I am the great conqueror. I am the greatest emperor. The Bible says, while he was still fascinated about himself, while he was still talking, foolish, exalting himself in his own eyes, the voice from heaven came to him. And the voice said, Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, may I interrupt you? Uh, tonight, even right now, your kingdom is taken from you. What do you mean? Yeah. It's taken from you. Next thing you know, that same time, he loses everything, and he loses his mind. 
See, the Bible says, mind of Christ should be in us. That's the only way to keep us normal right here. If there is no mind of Christ, fix it right here. You know what's going to happen? Corrupted mind, perverted mind, sick mind will be instead. And there is no middle ground. Amen. So, everything was taken from him. And for seven years, what a learning experience when God humbles. Here we read that Jesus humbled himself. There, God had to humble Nebuchadnezzar because he wouldn't humble otherwise. As a matter of fact, before that, God gave him a dream. And in that dream, there was interpretation done by the prophet Daniel that was serving for the king of Babylon. And Daniel said, he interpreted the dream. Pretty much, it was a warning dream. Watch out, Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months passed since that dream. He didn't learn his lesson. He kept on. My empire. I'm such a great guy. I'm so great. I'm so awesome. I'm better than everybody else. God says, no, no, no. I, I'm right here. Don't forget about me. I'm the greatest. My glory shall have nobody else. You didn't learn your lesson? You didn't want to humble yourself? You had 12 month period from the dream up until now. You're still acting like a fool. Let me teach you a lesson. And God does this. He takes his right mind and he gives him he literally makes him a lunatic. And what's happening? For seven years, this man, he became like a beast, like an animal. He went out in a while, and he was... He had claws, he had long hair like a lion, for seven years. Can you imagine? Read the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Book of Daniel, chapter 4. As a matter of fact, let's open and let's see what happened after the seven years. Book of Daniel, Prophet Daniel, chapter 4. I'm almost there. <laughs> Book of Daniel, chapter 4. I'll tell you right now. Uh, let's, uh, verse 33. Book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 33. I'm reading. Immediately what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he, his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. Can you imagine that picture of a man that used to be the greatest? Had the greatest pedicure, manicure and everything. Huh. Look what happened. Now, uh, let, let's go to the next verse. And then, the next verse, verse 34. At the end of that time, it was seven year period, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. Guys, I love this verse. I love this verse. In reality, quite honestly, until we lift up our eyes towards heaven, people are insane. We are insane until we get closer to God and get connected with God. He said, my sanity was restored when I lift up my eyes toward heaven. And look what happens. My sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored, glorified Him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. Next verse. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? Next verse. At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Isn't that amazing what humility does? But in his case, God had to humble him. He couldn't actually avoid the seven years of an animal, life like a wild beast. But he didn't want to, so God had to humble. So the key for us is to do it ourselves, amen? Because there are different agents that could humble you. Life could humble you. God can humble you. Or we can humble ourselves, amen? 
we can humble ourselves like Jesus humbled himself <laughs> under the mighty hand of God. And you know what has that, that's happening practically? Look, Philippians chapter 2, let's continue. With that we finish. We're going to continue the subject next Friday. Look what it says. Verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence, when Paul was in prison, he writes, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You see, again, Jesus was humble in heart, not outward appearance. So Paul says, I don't need your postures when I'm there. I need you to be humble before God knows when nobody's looking. Not only with my presence, but also at my absence. And then he says, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Guys, one more announcement. Salvation is not an uh, event, it's a process. Hello? Salvation is a process. If you don't continue in God, Bible says work it out. You got salvation, you got to work it out with fear and trembling. Amen. And look what he says. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast of you on the day of Christ, that I did not run or labor for nothing. Practically he says, make me proud boys. Make me proud girls. Make me proud as your pastor. Make me proud. Jesus. Because everything that I labored, I don't want it to be in vain. So I want you to understand this. In order for you to overcome, in order for you to actually, you know, persevere, you got to have the same attitude as Jesus Christ, which is become meek and humble under God, before God. We're going to talk next time more practically how to do that and how this happened in real life, in our everyday life. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up to you. Hallelujah. Did you receive anything tonight? Hallelujah. I think that there is no better way to, don't please leave because we, we have those five minutes afterwards about the things we want to discuss. But there is no better way, you know, to humble ourselves is to, I mean, that's the, that's where we start pretty much. It's not as better way, but it's, you know, that's where we all start is uh, to give your life to Jesus Christ. You know, you pretty much... Give your life to Him. You say, Lord, my life, I'm not outside of that yoke instrument. I want to be right there with you. Your head is in one compartment. My, mine is right next to you. I'm here with you. I'm yours, Lord, and you are mine. I say yes to you. We make this agreement and covenant that we're going to be together. I want to learn from you, Lord. I want you to teach me. So if you're here tonight and you never publicly accepted Jesus, you may have religion, understand, but you want to do a proclamation before the people of God and accept Jesus, it's your chance. We want to pray. We want to pray for you. So if you're here, we want to pray for you. Let's give it to God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus died publicly. He actually bled. he was bleeding publicly. He he took shame and punishment publicly for you and I. And I think he deserves that public recognition. Amen. Because none of us are ashamed of him. Because he was not ashamed of us when he was hanging on that cross, bleeding to death. If I would be ashamed, he would be the last one to be ashamed of. Because there is nobody like him, nobody is better like him, and nobody done what he has done for me. When I was a wretch, he saved me. He extended his love. He wasn't sterile about it. He just went all out. He 
and say, you know what? I'm going to rest you. Here, watch me taking this for you. So if you're here, this is your chance. I suggest not to delay, not to procrastinate. I suggest to come. Come and we pray for you together. Anybody else before we start praying? Anybody else? Come. Anybody else? Everybody else is good with God. Praise Jesus. Let's just pray this prayer together. I'm just gonna simply pray this prayer. You repeat after me. Prayer of repentance. Where you say to God, forgive me. You know, it's a great, it takes a real man to accept my wrongs. It takes a real man, not to justify, not to say, no, 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 here I made that mess up, but I was right. To say, you know what? Right, wrong, Lord. I say all together, forgive me. I want to be a real man about it. Anything that I've done, I want to be a real man about it. Before you. Because you know everything as it is. So why am I going to play these games? Why am I going to try to put some show? You know, I want to become real. That's a great step. You know what? God is looking right now. He's right now right here. And He's very proud of you guys. He's like, that's my voice. You see, all of us are staying here. We have no idea. But He knows the reason why not only you were born, He gave you life, but the reason you are standing here right now in His presence, willing to open and say to Him, Lord, I give my life to you. Let's just pray to you. Close your eyes if you like to. Dear Heavenly Father, come to you as I am, not fronting, not trying to make myself somebody I'm not, not trying to present myself right, correct, or just. I simply humble myself before your majesty, before your holiness, before your presence. Father, forgive me for every sin that I've done, for every law that I broke, every commandment that I just I ask that you may accept me. I ask that you may wash me clean. That you may give me a new heart. A brand new start in life. Father, I thank you that you made it possible for me to become new. Lord Jesus, I thank you for paying the price for my wrongs and making it right. Settling everything upon that wooden cross and sealing it with your holy blood that testifies forever and ever that I am redeemed, that I am accepted, that I am forgiven, that I am yours in your mind. So Lord, in this moment, I make you mine. You are my God. You are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You are my light. You are my love. You are my precious King. To you, I commit myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stretch your hands. Father, we thank you so much. What's in one, one, 
Father, we bless right now one, Lord, and I just thank you so much that you brought him here tonight, Lord. And I just pray that this may be a start and you know, altogether a new journey for him, Lord. A journey that will lead him to life everlasting. Not stopping, Lord God. This would be a small beginning of something wonderful and great that only you have purpose and only you know. Father, we just bless him, Lord, and we ask you, Daddy, that you may fill him with your spirit, that you may refresh his heart, that you may refresh his insight, that you may renew his mind, Father God, as he continues to draw closer to you, that you may breathe your fresh life inside of him. Father, we commit him to you, Lord, and we are so thankful for him, for saving him, for giving him your mercy, your grace. Hallelujah, this courage inside to step out and accept you. Lord God, let that come tonight in the heavens, and let this be confirmed even in his, in his own heart, that this is yet the best decision he has done ever in his life. We break every curse, we break satanic different plans, we cancel them in the name of Jesus over this life. Tell we have no right over this life, therefore get your hands away from him. Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the King, this is Jesus' territory. Therefore you have to leave in Jesus' name. Let your power come, Lord. Let your grace come, ability to overcome, ability to overcome, ability to overcome that which unpleases you, and ability to do that which pleases you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Bless, bless, bless my God. Bless Kevin, Lord. I thank you so much for his heart. Thank you, Lord, for the warrior heart. Pray, Lord, that he may be a warrior in your army. Pray that you may teach him, even as soldiers are taught. I pray, Lord God, that he would not be too occupied with civilian affairs, that he may spend time with you, that he may be taught of you, that he may learn from you, Lord. Father, we bless our brother, Lord, and we just gently deliver him to your hands, Lord, and we ask for your will to be accomplished. We ask, Lord God, for your will to be accomplished in his life. And all the little hindrances here and there, Lord God, let them be just put aside, let them be moved, and let the path be cleared before him. Father, you may take him to the places unimaginable, Lord. Father, I bless, Lord, him, and I pray that that close fellowship and connection with you, it may increase, it may deepen. Today, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the fields of your glory, Lord, where you've taken him. The things that you've shown him. The new thing that you created. Because the former things are gone and passed away. Behold, you make all things new. So Lord, we speak that newness, complete new life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift up our hands to you. Just ask for your blessing tonight. Father, bless your people in this house, Lord. Help us to understand what your heart desires. Help us not to fight with you, wrestle with you, but simply submit. You are stronger, Lord. We simply submit. We simply submit to you. Father, we forgive those that hurt us, those that offend us. We pray for them, Lord, that you may bless them, Lord, that you may show them the right way. Pray, Lord, that you may extend your grace to them and restore them again. In Jesus' name. 
We pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord, that slipped and slided, not coming any longer, Lord, feeling overwhelming guilt, or maybe frustration, or maybe anger. Father, I pray that you may, even through that wall, the barrier that's there, that your hand may touch their hearts, that you may return them to the place of your dwelling as prodigal sons and daughters, where once again they can taste the goodness of the Lord. Daddy, we love you, we thank you. You are so amazing. You are so great, Father. We thank you. We thank you for fresh green. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Take us on the on the fields. I don't know. That's what that's what I like a like a fresh fields, <laughs> fresh fields. You know, like it's where you out of the city, you know, and it's just fields, with nice pastures. Because we are His sheep, and I think that you know that God is trying to say that there's abundance of of of, 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 of yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly right there. You know, and then that, and that, that's, that's a place, you know, that place is inside our spirit, it's inside our heart. And God wants to take us there. That's what God showed me when I was praying for you. Right there, you see, right there. The place, <laughs> in your heart. Right there, when, when all these things they put aside, and just, it's me and Him. And it's this fresh air, you know, this, yeah. This, remember? Open field, you know, not constricted. Just that God has a place to move inside, you know. All of those little things that are not important anymore, just me and him. Просторное такое место, понимаете? Привольное, где Божий Дух может просто двигаться. Just say it for American friends. Just say that. I don't know how to say this. Prastorna. Open field. Open field. Guys, God bless you. We bless you.